So I came across a tweet um, a couple of days ago where some photographers were having an argument about how retouching is ruining um, storytelling photography. That was very interesting to me, particularly because I thought retouching was just a tool to improve your overall storytelling capabilities. However, this photographer seemed to imply that most other photographers were perhaps overusing the tool or perhaps did not even understand why they have to use retouching in the first place. So I decided to take a look into the past to see how and why retouching even came into photography and draw my own conclusions on the real truth behind retouching in photography. But before that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Joshua Creepers and I create content on photography, design and film in hope to share what I'm going to learn on my creative journey with you. So if you like that kind of stuff, don't forget to subscribe below so you can um, check out all the videos I post in the future. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for sticking around. Now let's get going to this week's video, talking about the truth behind retouching in photography. Let's get going. <music> Whether you're a photographer or a normal person, chances are you've heard the word retouching several times. I mean, photographers love to talk about retouching, especially in portrait photography. And um, what retouching really is, it's a tool to sort of improve the overall quality of a photograph. It is usually done using editing softwares like Photoshop, Lightroom, and a whole lot of other stuff. Even some little apps on your phone, like the Instagram editing or even the iPhone um, native editing app are all tools to help you retouch your photo. To make it very easy for you to understand whether you're a photographer or not, there are two main types of retouching. There's a basic retouch and there's an extensive retouch, something other photographers prefer to call high-end retouching. retouching um, cut across all forms of photography from portraiture to architecture to advertising commercial photography documentary photography i mean it's something that runs throughout and um, for the basic retouching it simply talks about um, things like color correction maybe returning the image to a really a very even exposure that is very true to life simple things like cropping making sure the image is straight and not bent those simple edits are usually under the category of basic um retouching it's usually used by a lot of um, photographers who work with a lot of images like shooting around 600 to a thousand images especially event photographers they are the ones who usually use this type of technique on the images because they they work on a lot they don't really have the time to sort of go high-end or extensive on certain images however there are some images or clients who demand that their images are edited extensively or you can say they prefer high-end retouching. So the high-end retouching, which is the second part, is um, where people spend more time to either add or subtract certain elements to improve the overall quality of a picture. To make it very easy for you to understand, I'm going to show you a few examples from some of the work I've done in the past to walk you through the difference between a high-end retouch and a basic retouch. So in this example, this image is just straight out of the camera. No edits at all. Now, this is the edited version. I simply just cropped the image to make sure that everything falls in place, added a little bit of brightness and added a little bit of my touch to make sure everything is right. The color is a bit more saturated now, everything is cool. If I'm editing a lot of pictures, this is the style I will usually choose because it's faster and it's um, clean enough for the client to approve or people can just like it the way it is. So this is what I, I would prefer or I would call a basic retouch, it's not so extensive. However, this is an extensive or high-end retouch. You can notice how I changed the background to put more attention um, on the model, how I even added a little bit of hair to sort of improve the overall quality of um, the photograph, went ahead to brighten the skin up a little bit more, add a little bit of shine to increase the contrast and the depth of the image. So you can understand how the picture has moved from this and now to this. So this is a little example. Let me show you at the second example. This is another example of an image that has basic retouching. Most of the blemishes on the face has been removed. The picture has been cropped. Some little things like the phrase on the um, button part of the jeans has been corrected. Um, so it's really good to go. Very, very basic. You can go ahead and send it to your client. However, this version is a, was a more high-end retouch. You can see how the background has been changed, how the skin has been toned down, a little, um, a little bit of dodge and burn to sort of shape and create depth in the image. So you can understand. Retouching does not only work in portraiture, you can also use it in other fields of photography as well. So let me show you a second example where I did a basic and extensive retouch in architecture. 
So when this photo, this picture was shot at sunset and it has been edited a bit to make sure that the image is evenly lit. However, I can go ahead and push the limits of this image to extract something really cool. So what I can do is, um, in this particular image now, the edited version, you can see that uh, the distortions have all been corrected. Most of the things in the image, like the AC has been taken out, some empty rooms has now been lit up, the sky has been replaced to make it more dramatic and make the sunsets more evident, the colors in the grass have all been increased in saturation and the picture itself overall looks very different and very appealing than the previous one this is another example where you can where i applied extensive return you can see the before of the picture looks almost unusable the scaffolds everywhere but then in this version which is the edited version all the scaffolds have been have been removed so this is an example of an image that the client would definitely um, prefer you to do an extensive retouch for this particular image i think i left Accra to tamale and, and by the time I got there, the people who were supposed to remove the scaffolds um, from the building had not done it because they thought I was coming the next day. However, I had traveled 18 hours from Accra to Tamale and I could not stay um, one more day for them to take it down. And I couldn't return to Accra on the same day empty handed. So I decided to take the picture regardless and retouch it later extensively retouch later to clear all the scaffolding so this is like the, the example between basic retouching and also extensive retouching software has greatly increased the speed and efficiency of photo retouching however software did not introduce retouching retouching has been around as old as the camera has back in the 1800s most techniques in retouching as we know today were based on the really incredible techniques back in the day when people used to shoot on film and develop them in a dark room Things like dodge and burn, blemish removal, skin smoothing, body sculpting, I mean, name it. Taking away um, a lot of light, sort of recovering highlights in overexposed areas, recovering um, under exposed shadows. I mean, all that used to exist back when people used to put photographs on a film and develop it in a dark room. It, I mean, back when photographers used to retouch negatives, it looked really interesting. Things like dodge and burn was done by simply holding a piece of black paper over the exposed image in a certain amount of time to make sure that it wasn't exposed evenly as the other parts of the image. Burning was done very similarly. Things like masking, they would sort of take a cardboard, place it over the negative, cut out the areas they don't want exposed and put it over the, the picture when they're exposing it to light just to make sure that those areas are the only parts exposed to light. Things like freckles were removed directly on the negative where they would put little black marks on the areas that they felt was too dark so it wouldn't get enough exposure to light. I mean, very interesting. They use things like etching knives to sort of do body sculpting and get rid of some parts of people's body that they felt a bit embarrassed about. I mean, it was really interesting how they used to do it. It's exactly how it is now. In the 1870s, retouching became extremely popular. Clients insisted on it. It was simply inescapable and a photographer who couldn't retouch his images was simply regarded as a person who just owned a camera and not a proper photographer. But in the 1870s, something very interesting happened, right? Both the clients and other photographers started to complain about excessive retouching. Sounds familiar? Yeah, I thought so too. That's exactly what we see today. An editor and writer called Henry Hunt Snelling made an interesting statement back in 1872 um, saying a photographer who could not develop um, a negative that could merit the same appreciation as an already retouched photograph could not and did not deserve to be called a photographer. That is exactly what we keep seeing today on Twitter where people are calling other photographers who can take good images without having a retouched real photographers. I mean, this thing has existed way back in 1870. Other photographers also joined the Discord to voice out their own opinions about retouching. However, there was never really a verdict on who was right and who was wrong. Whilst other people kept doing it, they became very good at it and were known um, for very unique styles in retouching. Names like Ansel Adams was basically known as the master of dodge and Brandon in retouching. Other photographers made names for themselves as well. Whilst others just didn't know where to put a stop to it. They just kept going until all their images look like that. <laughs> So just like in the 1800s, retouching continues to be a very important tool in photography to help you improve your overall storytelling capabilities. However, the question is, when do you stop? Like, how do you know when to stop? How do you know you're overdoing it? How do you know what you're doing is even right? Unlike in the 1800s where photographers barely communicated to each other, if you wanted to learn to be a master in retouching, you had to be an apprentice. Today, we have something we call social media. 
<laughs> which is here to save your life. But still, the question of how to do it right still remains. So I'm going to leave you with my piece of advice on how I think you should improve your retouching skills. Like I said earlier, the main goal of photo retouching is to improve the overall quality of the image. But there's a catch, which is the picture has to be as true to life as possible. A typical example is an old man without wrinkles is literally an abomination. You've taken away the character of such a person and destroyed it. A baby without wrinkles is perfectly fine. If a kid has wrinkles, you can go ahead and take it away because that is not true to real life. It could be as a result of some anomaly or some complications in the birth. Certain things like, like scars and other birthmarks are things I've noticed people would edit out of photos. All these are parts of a person's character and when you take them out, you are sort of taking a piece of their personality whilst you're doing that. So these are things that you can be very careful about. The other thing you can do is because of social media, getting a virtual mentor is very easy. By virtual mentor, this person doesn't have to be someone you know in person or even meet in person. It, it, it can be someone you respect online, someone you can engage with online. Luckily for you, there are lots of amazing retouches in Ghana you can have as virtual mentors. Off the top of my head, I can think of names like a pack, like Pixelray, like Flow Shop, like Ben Bond, Josh Sisley, Franklin Jan, Gorg, I mean Joey Dutch, uh, Dex D, Nana Resh, Onassis, Edward Ose Edu. I mean, there are a lot of names. I don't even know who to mention. I'm going to add all their Instagram accounts down below so you can hit them up talk to them gently, be polite, and just sort of learn from them so you can know the boundaries between what's right and what's wrong. But most importantly, you can just do you. Another important way you can do it is to also sort of ask people you respect or trust to sort of critique your work. And in this case, you're looking for something we call constructive criticism. Not just people who are voicing all their opinions, but people who are giving you um, information on exactly why they feel this was wrong and this was right. And like I said, people you trust and respect, not just any random person online. Some opinions are meant to be kept in the dark and some opinions are meant to be learned from. Lastly, don't be afraid to move from the trail to create your own so others might follow. People might hate your editing style today, but trust me, it's very possible. Maybe, just maybe, that one day, your style of editing could become widely accepted by everybody on the planet. So you stick to it if you have a strong feeling about it. Well, that's it. That's the history of retouching. Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. This has been especially exciting for me. I'm going to link down below all the materials I use in this particular video. You can go out and check it out yourself. All the old techniques and retouching. I mean, it's very amazing to look at. The old film days was incredible, super incredible. Thank you guys so much for always coming back to check out my videos. I appreciate the time and content. Don't forget to subscribe and click the like button and share this video with any photographer friend you know. Let's get a conversation going. I really like to know what you think about retouching today. I really, really do. Thank you guys so much. Catch you later. Bye.